Hello and welcome to MedCrane. Today we shall be looking at normal labor. Generally, labor is the process by which fetus placenta and membranes are expelled through the blood canal. But when defining normal labor, we say it is a physiological process which commences spontaneously at term with rhythmic regular uterine contractions accompanied by progressive cervical effacement and dilation with descent of the presenting part that is usually the head or the cephalic part resulting in the expulsion of a healthy fetus, a complete placenta and membranes, and the duration should not be more than 12 hours. Normally we divide labor into four stages, starting from the first stage to the fourth stage. And in this tutorial, we should break down each stage in the management that is uh, done in each of the stages. How do we diagnose normal labor? How do we diagnose normal labor? How do we make a diagnosis of a normal labor? Normal labor is made a diagnosis when there is a diagnosis of normal labor is made when there is intermittent low abdominal pains radiating to the back after that seven weeks of gestation. There will be a mucoid blood stained vaginal discharge that is known as show, a drainage or sudden gush of liquor that is waterly on vaginal examination. Let's then look at the first stage of labor. The first stage of labor starts from the onset of labor to full dilation of the cervix, that is 10 cm dilation of the cervix. This first stage of labor is divided into two phases, the latent phase and the active phase. The latent phase starts from the onset of labor to cervical dilation of 3 cm and active phase starts from the cervical dilation of 3 cm to 10 cm which is termed as a full dilation and should be about 1 cm per hour. And then the management of first stage of labor entails the use of a pathograph. Assessment of the progress of labor, the mother and the fetus, is done by use of this tool known as a pathograph. For the case of the mother, we take vital signs as recommended, that is you check your temperatures, you check the temperatures of the mother for hourly, you check for the parsley that is half hourly, respiratory rate is done every half hourly, and blood pressure is checked every four hours. Then we encourage mothers to pass urine frequently at least two times per hour. We monitor the fluid input and output for these mothers, and we do a urinalysis to check out for any presence of ketones and protein in urine. This presence can be the presence of proteins in urine can be a suggestive or an indicative feature of preeclampsia. When doing fetal heart rate, when doing fetal monitoring, we check the fetal heart rate every 30 minutes, that is half hourly, and the normal range is usually range between 120 to 160 beats per minute. We check on the state of liquor, either if it's clear meconium stained, black stained or false smelling. We check for the state of fetal skull if there is any molding or caput formation. And we do these checks every 4 hourly and on vagina examination. Then during labor, we have to palpate for the contractions of the uterus every half hourly. We assess for the frequency and the duration for 10 minutes and then we chart them appropriately on the pathograph. We assess for the descent of the fetal head. The descent is then measured by the use of an abdominal palpation and is expressed in terms of fifths that are over the pelvic brain. The width of the five fingers is the guide to the expression in fifths of the head above the pelvic brain. Then after doing that, we usually do a vaginal examination for hourly. First vaginal examination is done on admission unless it is contraindicated. And during the first VE of a, and during the first vaginal examination, we do a pelvic exam. When doing vaginal examination, we check for the state of the vaginal walls and external genitalia. We check for the cervical dilatation, the state of the membranes, and liquor. 
then how do we manage the first stage of labor? We'll have to maintain a clean environment for these mothers to give birth. We practice infection prevention practices. Give reassurance to the mother to psychologically calm them because it's a tense situation. Have a chosen bad companion during these times of labor. We encourage for good communication and support from the staff. For example, the mother should be able to report progress. For example, the midwife should be able to report the progress to the mother. And we respect privacy and confidentiality of these mothers. And encourage fluid diet and energy drinks to boost the glucose levels of the mothers. And in terms of pain control, we encourage the mother to exercise breathing techniques, change of positions and moving around. We do a back massage, warm shower, and at times you can give drugs to calm down the pain. Then let's move to the second stage of labor. The second stage of labor starts from full dilatation of the cervix to delivery of the baby. We should diagnose second stage of labor when we see the following features. That is contractions which become strong and frequent when we have around 4 or 5 contractions in 10 minutes. The woman at this time may vomit. The mother may grunt and bear down. She may develop the urge to push or she will develop the urge to push and the head of the fetus will descend further down the bad canal. The perineum bulges and the skin becomes tense and glistering in nature and then we have the gapping of the anus. Now how do we manage mothers in second stage of labor? Full dilation should be confirmed first by digital pathogen examination and the woman should be encouraged to bear down with contractions and relax in between. At crowning, perineum should be supported with the fingers to prevent any perineal tear instances. And when the head is born, you check for the cord around the neck and loosen it if it's present. Then you clear the airway of the baby gently with the use of a sterile moist swab. Then during this delivery, the anterior shoulder is delivered first, followed by the posterior shoulder, and then the rest of the body then follows. We have to, and then we put the baby on the mother's abdomen and cover the baby, and then we do the apg scoring. After performing the first apg scoring at one minute, we clamp the cord and cut it, leaving an adequate length for administration of drugs if there are any needed, like in the case of resuscitation. And then after that, we'll do an apg scoring at five minutes, and after ten minutes. We show the baby to the mother to inform her the sex of the baby and let her to see by herself and less other ways. We identify the baby and apply an identification tag on the baby's hand. We wrap the baby in a warm towel and give the baby to the mother to introduce breastfeeding. After that, that's when we are able and at liberty to do a full physical examination to the baby when the baby is stable. And then the third stage of labor. In the third stage of labor, an active management is needed in order to prevent any cases of postpartum hemorrhage. The active management of third stage of labor includes immediate administration of oxytocin 10 international units intramuscular injection within the first minute of delivery. Then we deliver the placenta through a controlled contraction. We massage the uterus gently to remove all the clothes. And then we weigh the placenta. We put the baby on the mother's breast within 30 minutes to one hour. And then we leave the mother comfortable after delivery. And then in the last stage, which is the fourth stage, this is usually the interval of one hour after delivery of the placenta. In terms of management, we assess the mother's condition by assessing any cases of bleeding, taking a vital signs that's temperature, pulse rate and respirations and blood pressure. We provide food to the mother. We encourage the mother to pass urine frequently and continue with uterine massage every 15 minutes to encourage uterine contraction.